Hello, uh, in today's video we're going to have a further look at speed issues with uh, Riga turntables. Um, I mean this is mainly concentrating on the earlier the earlier types, so probably up to about 19, well early 90s, sort of the 1970s decks up to, up to early 90s which all used uh, similar motor and board sort of configurations. So uh, this is part two. Part two, part one covered um, a totally dead turntable, uh, which is a rare thing, but there are issues occasionally that can cause that. Uh, part two is for a turn, if you're having a situation where the turntable is always running slow, if it's always consistently slow, or very, very slow to start up, um, then this is what we're looking at today. Um, there is going to be a th part three. Uh, I just actually need to get a turntable in that's got that issue, so um, we'll, we'll talk about that one in a future video. So anyway, um, let's move on to the uh, part two. Right, I've taken off the, the glass platter. Uh, underneath we've got the uh, sub platter and the pulley. You can just about see the motor underneath there and the, the pulley you know, sits on the motor sits on suspension, so you get all the, get this sort of movement, which is nice to isolate the, the motor noise from the structure of the deck. Um, first check is is the belt okay? And the way to check it for a good belt is to if you just turn the sub platter sort of back to, back and forth like this, it should be driving the pulley easily, and there shouldn't be any slippage. And you can see there the reaction of the belt as it's gripping the pulley. So the, in this situation, the belt is good, no worries. That's not causing speed issues. Um, the second thing to do, take off the belt, um, and now this is the most common thing with with uh, speed, uh, cons constant speed issues, the most co common fault is the pulley itself can become detached from the actual spindle, which you can just about make out underneath, um, and the motor will run, but the, sp the, sp the actual pulley isn't running as quickly because it's, it, the, the spindle's slipping. The way to check for that is to get your, just get your fingers between and put a bit of pressure on. Yeah, and that's going to easily come off. Um, now there should be that should be so firmly attached that you could you could almost lift the turntable. I mean, obviously don't lift the turntable, up there, but you should be able to you know put a lot of force on that and pull the motor up, and it will never come off because it's uh, they're sort of pressed on with uh, with a well press, I suppose the, the the factory sort of fit it together. The fix for that is just to glue it back on. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing it. I generally say don't use super glue. Um, I would just put a tiny amount of a slow set glue on there. I've even used actually PVA, which is wood glue. Just a tiny little smear of wood glue on there, and press it back on all the way down. And leave it overnight. Um, if you want to, if you're more impatient than that, which I actually do this now. It's if you're an impatient person, um, you can use super glue. But um, the thing to do is to remove the bottom board, which I can show you. I've already done it. Remove the bottom board, and you can actually hold the motor underneath. Obviously make sure that this is not plugged into the mains or it will kill you, so don't do that. Um, but yeah, what you can then do is put your super glue on, put, the, put, the, put your hand underneath, support the motor, and then very quickly with your other hand, I actually can't do it while I'm holding the camera, um, put the pulley back on and push it down as quickly as you can because if it sets in the wrong place, you, you've effectively written the motor off because there's no way of getting it off again. Um, and I have had people do that and then bend the spindle trying to get it off, so uh, just be wary of that one. But it's, it's, it's a quick fix and it does seem to be a permanent fix if you do it that way. But uh, like I said, just be wary because it's um, super glue is, is, is almost too effective really. The other thing to check, um, and this tends to be a thing if, if you've moved house or you've, you've packed the deck or you've taken the deck apart in any way. Uh, if you've ever had the uh, sub platter out, um, don't get this very often. We used to get years ago. Used to get this, but um, what you need to check, if you, I mean, if you've never had this part out, then don't worry about it. It's not what it is. But if you've, if you've ever taken this out, and you're not going to be able to see this at all, so I'm, I'm going to have to talk you through it. At the bottom of the bearing housing, right down the bottom there, is a ball bearing. And what tends to happen with these, because it's the actual bearing itself is actually very, I mean, you'll find it's very difficult to get to go back down again because of the air pressure. Saying that this one's quite warm, so it has gone down. But if you take them out quickly, that pop occasionally it's got there's so much air pressure that it can actually flirt out the ball bearing and you can disappear over your shoulder and it's gone. But if there's no ball bearing in there, the deck will run, but it will do it does run very it'll run sort of at half speed because uh, it's just sitting on the flat, sitting on the flat end of the of the bearing instead of actually running on the ball bearing. 
So those are the, the main three reasons why a replaying will run at the wrong speed, uh, or consistently run at the wrong speed from cold. If um, if it runs fine for half a side of a record and then starts to slow down, that is another issue and that will be covered in um, in part three because uh, that's a that's a different thing um, and none of these things are involved in that. Uh, occasionally you get detached pulley and, the, and uh, this other thing which we're going to cover but uh, like I said that will be in part three. So anyway, there you go that's that's how you that's how you sort that problem out. So if you've got any questions about uh, problems with your rig or anything like that give us a call I'll put the number at the bottom of the screen um, but don't forget we also have a showroom sell new stuff and demonstration rooms upstairs and uh, yeah give us a call thank you very much